Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we'll be using the Board Games Counter Sheet extension to create some cards, uh, and I'll show you just how to use this extension. So we installed it in the last video, and this is actually cards.svg. Uh, it's an example file that comes with, the, uh, with this extension. And so we see we have three different cards here. They're all grouped together. And I'm just going to demonstrate how this works. So if we zoom out, we see here's our page. And these cards are each just a template. And so the way the extension works, we click on extension, uh, extensions here, go to board games and create counter sheet. And it has all these different options. So the name isn't really important right now, but what is very important is where the data file is. So we want to create a number of cards based off of the information found in this file, this countersheet.csv or whatever we, whatever it's called. And so ours is actually going to be called cards.csv because it corresponds with the cards.svg. And so the, we can find this too. It's, it's, a, it's an example. So the way we the place we find it, if we go to the game folder that we created in the last video, and remember we, I moved over the examples, which is these are the same examples that came, got downloaded from GitHub um, with uh, this this extension that we installed. So it has all these different ones, and one of them is cards here. So this is the cards.svg file that I have opened up here. But the other one is this cards.csv, which I also have opened up um, in LibreOffice. And what it has is three different columns telling about different cards, the text of the card, the title of the card, and the type of card. So the title would be this part here that says replace or title, and then the text would be the text inside. So we need to put the location of this, uh, the location which is my desktop, we need to put the location of this cards.csv file here in Inkscape where it says data file. And it has to be uh, an absolute path. So if we just say cards.svg and go apply, it's going to come up with an error and say we don't, you know, unable to find that file, where is it? So we need to give the absolute file path. So to find out where the path is, and that's why I put it in, I'm going to close a couple of these. That's why I put it directly on my desktop and just named it game so that it's not too hard to, to type out. So to find it, to find out the absolute directory of this, we just go right click and go to properties. And then the location is under C users. Uh, for me, it's called Dell Opt is the name of my computer. And then desktop game examples. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing, left click and highlight it and go copy. And that's just, the, that's just the examples directory. That's just the location of basically this. But inside here, it's also going to be called cards. So we'll come in here and we'll just right click, we'll highlight all of this and erase it and then right click and go paste. So now we have an absolute file path. C, users, Dell opt, desktop, game, examples. And I'll do one more uh, backslash and we'll type in, or is that a forward slash? And we'll type in cards.csv. So now, if we go apply, it's going to run through. We didn't change anything else. The only thing we've changed so far is this data file CSV. So it goes through, works, and it creates some nice custom cards for us over here that we can look at and see. So this says image three, two images, bold image, image two. And if we pull up our spreadsheet, we're going to notice we're going to see some of these same things. We've got uh, bold images down here, image three, image two, and then the same information that's being put in there. It's calling a little PNG. This G4274.png is being called. And so that's this little, these little images here of like a little mouse uh, rabbit. And then we have these little images here. So do you see what's happening? It's, it's kind of calling in this. And so if we close out of this, and now we have these different cards. We can we can change them there. It, it's all grouped. Oh, and it, what it actually did was like layered because it did. There's a lot of information in this spreadsheet, so it actually created every uh, line here is a card. And so we can find these cards. They're just like layered on top of each other. It just did them all. And so we can go through and find all these different cards and line them up. And so it arranged them in a nice printable sheet for us. And now we have all these cards and they're grouped. If you want to change it, we can go Control Shift G and ungroup. Oops, control shift G and un and then we can ungroup and move around different elements of the card. Wow, this is getting this is super messy. It's a kind of a hard extension to explain. It's not super it's not as smooth as if it was just integrated into Inkscape directly, 
because we have to use this external CSV file. But the nice thing is it's very extensible, so you can create your own templates too and not have to go off of these examples. Um, let's do another example though, just to kind of drive this home. So I'm gonna close this, uh, close without saving. I'll go back into here and I'm gonna go to examples and instead of cards this time, there's one called uh, dice fold. So let's open up dice fold and see what this looks like. We have our dice fold, which looks like this so far. So it just has uh, like what you would cut out to fold into a, a, a paper die. And then if we run our extension with it, we go to extension, board games, create counter sheet. And now it remembers, which is super nice, it remembers the location. So we just go to the end here, but it's looking for cards.csv, but the corresponding CSV file for this dice fold is actually going to be this dicefold.csv. So we'll open it up in, in uh, LibreOffice, and it only has a couple different things. It just has basically images, one, two, three, four, five, six images, one for every face of the die. And so what we'll do with this is just make sure we type in dicefold, D-I-C-E-F-O-L-D dot CSV has to be exactly spelled the same way as the as the data file. So when we click apply, it's going to look for that data file. It's going to look at every all the information with it and see if it can find corresponding images to put on the those uh, the, the faces of this die. So we'll click apply. It found all the images and mapped them to there. And so now we could print this out and fold and we have a we roll to see a character's face. But we can go in and change. So all of those uh Hit close. So those images are all here. We can see each one of these. If we open it up, this is an image. And we can actually see these images and edit them and or change them. So if we wanted the die to actually be like a conventional, like a number, a, a fancy looking five or something, we can edit this. Uh, or just cr add a new image and then change the name of the image here in the data file. Is that making sense? Should we do one more to kind of illustrate what's happening? Let's close this. Let's go back into the examples. Well, okay, a good one. Let's open up this template. So under template, there's a really cool one. Prototype cards. So we go here, we open up. So this is going to look at all these different types of cards we have here. And then if this is the data, the CSV file. Let's minimize this. Let's open up the prototype cards SVG file, the Inkscape file, and see what it looks like. So we see our page is over here to the right. And then we have all these different types of cards. It, uh, we have a, a card with four images on it. We have a card with two images on it. We have a card with an image and some text below. We have a title card with a bunch of different lines of information. Uh, we have this another card or a uh, line card. We have a, a title card here that has just a, a bunch of information on it. And so we have one with little pictures and stuff to the side. So these are just different formats and we can move all of these around. So we could actually move this uh, parts of this around now the image will be here on the template every, every one of these is a is a template and so they're kind of grouped together but if we ungroup them we can change we can create any kind of template we want for any kind of card we want so let's create the cards now we go to extension and we have to have the file open if we just go new like if we open up a new Inkscape file and go to extensions and try to recreate what we did last time with the dice even though this is looking for the dicefolds.csv, if we try to apply it, it's gonna fail because we're just opening a blank document and it doesn't know where that dice, we have to actually open the dice SVG and then run the extension while that SVG is open. So this one, since this is open, the card we're gonna look for is the, uh, the, the file we're gonna look for is this one, prototype underscore cards underscore, underscore all dot CSV. So we go to extensions, board game, create uh, counter sheet, and then we just change the name of it. So this is not the dice fold because it doesn't have the correct information for dice fold. It's the proto uh, type underscore cards. And that's where it comes in like to not have a super long name. And then all dot SV dot uh, CSV is what it was gonna be. So we hit apply. Oh, it couldn't find it. Oh, that's because it's not under examples. This one is actually in a different folder, remember? There's examples and templates. 
this is actually in the templates directory. So we'll change this. Instead of this part being called examples, it's going to be called T-E-M-P-L-A-T-E-S, templates. Apply, and this should work. Um, so something was wrong here. Um, oh, because I ungrouped this to show you. So we just need to regroup this. Control G. You won't have to do that unless you ungrouped it too. I, my, I was showing you an example and I messed it up, I think. Now we'll apply and it should work. So everything has to be in a group too in order for it to render properly. Okay, so I actually made some changes. I was having trouble rendering, so I actually modified the CSV file to just render just these two types of cards because um, there was something causing trouble. I didn't have time to go through and figure out what it was. But now if we hit apply, it'll just go through and just render those first two types of cards. And so we see we have the cards here. And, um, and then we can move and see. And so this is just a couple. And one thing I wanted to show too, if we change this, we can change the uh, like this outset distance to like 15. Oh, and then we got to go control Z and undo this and then reapply. And then that'll just change sort of this uh, cut line, the outset around. So now this is a little bit bigger. This is 15. You might not notice the difference. You can also just go, um, we can actually up click this live preview button. Then it'll show it. And then if we make changes here, like changes 15 to 150, and that'll have just a much larger outset, just thinking about it. And now it's like basically, yeah, 150 pixels or millimeters for the outset of that. One more thing I want to show you that I just thought of before I end this video. If we go back into examples and go to this cards example again. So this one, if you remember correctly, let's close this. Or if we go back into this cards, we see that it has a, it had quite a few cards here, right? It had, um, I don't know how many different cards there are here. But if we want to do this one, we go to extensions, board games. We have to go back into examples and change this to cards. And then we go apply. So remember, it was layer, layering those cards on top of each other. So I had all four of them, had just four. Um, first of all, we can change the size of the cards. So if we just select this, uh, and we ch or let's select all of them, and we just scale them down like that small. Oh, whoops. And I guess we'll just delete all this. Now we go apply. Now the cards will all be that size. Oh, i got to undo it, do it a different way. Okay, now it'll work. So now we take this, we scale them all down here. Now we hit apply. It'll show these cards very small and it will just have all of them on one sheet. So now we have all of our cards right here that on one single printed page. So to change the size of the card, you actually change the size of the template, or at least that's one way to do it. And if we make it really large, oh, again, you have to hit Control Z and undo that. You can't apply twice, that, that was the problem. So if we do make it really big and then go apply, it'll just go based off of this size of the card. And so now we're only going to have like one card per sheet or something. Yeah, because it calculates the size of our page and makes sure that we don't put too many cards on. So now that these are all stacked on top of each other. Well, for printing, let's get rid of all that. Um, let's make this back kind of to the size it was, maybe like this. So for printing, if we check this or if we put in a directory here, copy and we go to PDF output we can actually put it into this just this game directory and now if we hit uh, if we go look at that game directory real quick we just go back to game there's nothing in here but if we hit apply now it will actually create a PDF file for every printable page of this so we see it's working right now we've got two three PDFs four and so it's going to actually create, um, we've got four different sheets here. And if we open them up, we see each sheet contains different cards that we can print. So that's a nice option too. If, if you're, you're ready to print and you don't want to just like render the um, to Inkscape, you can actually render a, a printable PDF page. Then you just send all of these pages to your uh, game producer or yeah, the print shop that's printing your cards. And they'll just print them off, cut them, box them up. And uh, yeah, that is it. So that's just a little quick introduction to using this counter sheet. Hopefully that's enough to kind of get you interested in it. Again, it's open source software, so just play around with it, figure it out. Um, you can dive in and make some changes to the code if you have the, that ability, but um, really, really useful stuff. Oh, okay, I guess let's do one more thing. This video is kind of long, but if you're curious about how this works, um, if we go 
take uh, your template and then go Control Shift G. And so we'll actually right click and go to Object Properties. And so the object of this card, like what it's called, is actually the ID is DDD. That's a bad example because that's not that's not one of the real ones. Let's take this one, Control Shift G, and then click on the actual the largest or which one is it? Hold down Alt and then click until you find the right one. So this one's called R card. And so if we go to our thing here, we find R card. Uh, this is the old one. Here we have card, we have I card. So the other one's called I card. I guess maybe there's not an example using the R card. But basically this card here and this I card is, is gonna correspond with the ID of these right here. So this one is the I card. So this I card here, this is I card and it corresponds with I card here. And so if we call this iCard5, it won't be able to find it because it actually looks, this first column is looking for the ID of the object here. Does that make sense? So you can create your own templates that way as long as you name your object something that is uh, mapped to here. Maybe I'll make another video showing how to create custom templates and using some of this more custom stuff. But for now, I think I'll end this video. So I hope you found it informative. Um, actually, in the immediate video, uh, I think I'm going to do, uh, there's another extension for creating a grid map um, by the same developer. So if you want to create like a grid of squares for like an actual board game, um, I'll show you how to do that. And it's also going to be a board game extension. So there'll be another option here to do that. I'll show you how to install that and get using that as well. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.